so the little RV-12 is in its uh, new home here in a uh, tea hangar at Hartford Brainerd Airport. And this hangar used to belong to the late Joe Gauthier. So anybody that's been around EAA for a while knows that he's a pioneer in the build world. And, uh, we're kind of proud to have this RV-12 in his old hangar, right? That's right. So, uh, you know, as you said, uh, Joe was one of the founding members of the uh, EAA Chapter 166, and we were very honored to have him as a member for a long time. And uh, it was a privilege for me to actually be able to acquire the hangar from him once he uh, decided not to fly anymore and sell his aircraft. And uh, as you said, now it's going to be the new home for our, our RV-12, so we're really happy to have it here. Uh, you know, in the last video we did, we brought the, the aircraft over from, you know, its build hangar, which was Hangar 2 in Brainerd, and uh, now it's in its uh, new permanent home, and we still have a little bit of work to do with the uh, canopy and the, the fairing on the canopy, but it's, it's really mostly cosmetic work to, you know, to really take out any final blemishes on the fairing, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it should be, all that work should be complete within the next uh, week or so. Okay, so the, the next bit of work that we have, major activity on the aircraft, is actually related to the engine. So before we um, fire up the engine, this engine has been sitting in a crate um, for m several years, so we want to open up the gearbox um, and make sure that uh, there's no issues in there, so no corrosion, anything like that. So we have a mechanic scheduled to come in this week, open it up, inspect it, put it back together, and then the, uh, the mechanic is going to help us with the, uh, you know, adding the oil, the radiator fluid, and then do the uh, oil purge procedure. And then once that's done, we'll be able to actually start the engine, and uh, the mechanic is going to help us with, uh, you know, sinking and tuning the carburetors to make sure it's running well. Yeah. So it's been a good, busy couple of days, Rick. Uh, yeah. We, this airplane came to life. It's a huge milestone in any build project. And as we learned, it's not a matter of just dumping some oil and coolant in this Rotax 912. There's a lot of preparation and a lot of stuff to do along the way, right? Yeah, that's you're exactly right. So one of the first things we did uh, is, you know, working our way toward that milestone of the first engine start was, I think we've mentioned this before to our viewers, right, that we had a concern about this engine since it had been sitting for over five years in a crate. And uh, we finally got this aircraft built, got the engine installed. So we were worried about, you know, could there be any sort of internal corrosion? We've had the uh, cylinders boroscope, they look good, but we were still concerned about the gearbox. So we went ahead and uh, hired a mechanic and opened up the gearbox and uh, looked inside and it looked pristine. It, uh, it looked like it had just come from the factory, even though it had been sitting for five years and it's only um, had the initial, um, you know, preservative put on it. So there was no additional preservation that was done. But gearbox looks great. So uh, after the gearbox was put back on, then we had to obviously like put oil in the uh, tank, um, fluid in the radiator, and uh, then go through priming the whole engine to make sure that we got oil throughout the system. And uh, that took a little more work than we thought. It wasn't as simple as um, just filling the tank and then, um, you know, rotating uh, the prop or, you know, hitting the ignition switch. We ended up, we found that we had to actually prime the system. So we had to actually pour oil into a lot of the oil lines, into the, uh, you know, the oil cooler. And then we were then able to get, uh, you know, the whole system primed and found that we were getting oil pumping throughout the system. Um, after that, then the next step was then doing the oil purge procedure, making sure that we got oil into the hydraulic li lifters 
And um, that actually, to get it completely in there, um, we ended up having to start the engine and uh, run it for a short period of time, check the, uh, you know, the valves and found that we, we did indeed get the uh, oil into the, the lifters. So that was great. So after we got oil into the system, uh, the next thing we did during the engine run-up was uh, sinking the carburetors and adjusting the idle. And uh, so our mechanic had some uh, vacuum gauges which he connected uh, to the, the uh, carburetors to make sure that we got, uh, you know, good vacuum and equal vacuum on both of them. And, uh, and then it was adjusting um, the idle. So we have the throttle cable coming out here, you know, to the throttle arm. And, um, and then there's this little barrel here, this brass barrel that uh, acts as the idle stop. And then uh, just making sure that that was equal on both sides um, so that, you know, when we pull the throttle back, we're getting a nice, even um, and uh, smooth running idle. And uh, our mechanic was setting it around 1650 for idle. And uh, so um, actually during the run-up, we found that uh, these things might have slipped a little bit, so our idle dropped, so we'll have to make that adjustment uh, going forward here. Um, but after um, getting the engine started, doing all that work with the carburetors and the idle and uh, the oil system, um, we did our first taxi as well. And uh, what we decided to do during that was obviously the brake conditioning. So that procedure um, requires you to essentially um, get the aircraft out onto the taxiway, hold uh, the initial um, part of the procedure is get the RPM up and while you're holding brakes to see when at what RPM you start slipping or creeping. And then you uh, run up and down the taxiway um, at um, you know a good you know fast taxi, and you're holding the brakes and you're sort of uh, burning them in is I guess the way I would describe it. So you get up to a fast taxi and then you apply the brakes pretty hard, slow down but don't completely stop, and then keep doing that and you do that several times. Uh, and then at the end of the procedure, you come back and then you run that, uh, that check again where you're holding the brakes and you, you know, push the uh, RPM up and see at what point, at what RPM you get uh, creeping occurring. And uh, you know, the intent there is to see that you, it takes more RPM during that, after the brakes have been conditioned to actually get that creep. Um, so overall, it was um, you know a good two days that uh, we had first working on the engine, getting it started, and then uh, the next day we did the uh, taxi test and uh, the brake conditioning. But uh, everything's looking good. We we have found a few little minor things. Like I said, we still have to we we're going to have to readjust our um, idle. We found that we have a minor oil leak leak somewhere around the uh, oil reservoir tank that we have to address. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's probably it as far as what we found so far. So while the engine was, uh, was running and we were doing the taxi tests and brake uh, break in, uh, it was a good opportunity to uh, work with the avionics a little bit more. Uh, it's Garmin G3X Touch. And uh, two of the major settings uh, set up for that system is uh, calibrating the magnetometer. Mm -hmm. And that's the heading uh, sensor yeah. that's in the aircraft. And there's a procedure uh, for that. Garmin makes it easy. It's all done via the software. But the job of the operator is to line the aircraft up on, uh, start with north, and then run the thing around every 30 degrees. And the system makes its adjustments from there. And it's checking for uh, interference, uh, electrical interference, magnetic interference. And then the other calibration is for the Adahars, getting the right pitch and uh, roll uh, setting for the, uh, for the attitude display on a G3X Touch. So uh, that all went well, and uh, so that's all set. We've got a good, uh, uh, good avionics display on that big Garmin G3X display. Yep. And uh, what comes next? Well, next is, uh, is actually working on the certification for us, right? So we need to uh, contact the FAA, get all of our paperwork in, um, and 
you know, schedule uh, an inspection with the DAR. And then once that is complete, um, then I think we're going to be ready for uh, our first flight test. Yeah. Getting so, close. Yeah, it's getting very close and it's getting really exciting now. Yeah. And you talked about our mechanic. It's uh, worth a shout out to Arian Folden. Been a staple in this area. He served the uh, flight design community, uh, yeah. light sport aircraft. Uh, he worked for Flight Design USA in Woodstock, Connecticut. I don't know anybody in this area that knows Rotax engines better than uh, Arian, and we appreciate his work and guidance along the way. And I, I recommend anybody uh, setting up an engine for the first time to yeah work with a trusted mechanic or shop. It's a good for another set of eyes, and I think it really makes things go a little bit more smoothly. What yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I, he was an invaluable resource, right, for us, helping us out with this first engine start and then the oil purging procedure and everything. And then even with cabling and setup of uh, running wires, yeah, um, he had a lot of great pointers for us. And so I would recommend that uh, any home builder when they get to the point that they're ready to start their engine, they reach out to an AMP that has experience with their engine, uh, their type of engine, and get them to come out and take a look at it and help them with uh, getting the engine started. Yes, yeah, so. that's a good point. And we brought him in even long before we started the engine. You know, uh, once the engine was installed, he got a look at things and made some good pointers. Uh, fix this, and you might secure this a little bit better, and uh, just kind of tighten things up a little bit. And uh, I think it was really valuable. Yeah, and having him, you know, help us with the gearbox inspection was uh, was incredible. I mean, he had that thing off. We took a look at it, and then he had it back together, and he probably did that all in like less than 30 minutes. Yeah. It was great. You know, and also, we've done another video on, on our visit to Lockwood uh, Aviation down in Florida to do our transition training in the RV-12, but uh, while we were there, we spent some time in, in Lockwood's Rotax shop. We learned a lot there, too, in talking with some of the techs and talking with Phil Lockwood, so we walked away with uh, even more knowledge, and I think it helped when it came time to start this engine for the first time. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Uh, another incredible you know, resource down there in Sebring, Florida. So uh, Lockwood Aviation. You, exactly, Lockwood Aviation. If you have any questions about Rotax, they're the, the place to go. Yeah. Well, that's the update, and uh, we'll check in again soon. Yep. Thanks for watching. Yep.